I want to know how many people here tonight is like to party. Don't be scared of answering that. You know, we give the world too much stuff, you know. I mean, it's okay for Christians to party too. We just don't party like they party, you know. Maybe I should rephrase it. How many of you like to go to a party, huh? Yeah, most of us do, you know. I mean, even creatures like myself that aren't the most sociable in the world, we still like the occasional Christmas party and so forth, you know, because, I mean, the food, the fellowship, I mean, it's, it's a good thing, you know. We have different kinds of parties like Christmas parties and birthday parties and uh, just name it. You know, welcome parties, goodbye parties, and so forth. But tonight, we're going to talk about how to throw a party for a guest of honor. Now, you probably already know where I'm going with this, and and uh, I could probably just say a couple of things, give an altar call, and we'll be out of here in five minutes. But, you know, I want you to get your money's worth, so I'm going to talk a little bit longer than that tonight. So what we're going to talk about tonight is just a few things that you need to do in order to throw a party for a guest of honor. You know, one thing that you need to do is you need to send invitations. You know, you want people to come to the party, right? You don't want just the guest of honor to show up and nobody's there, so you send invitations out. You send invitations to everybody that you know and people that you haven't run into in a while. Just whatever it takes to fill your house or whatever the place is up, you send out the invitations to these people you know. And, uh, uh, you know, but the most important invitation of all to send, of course, is to the guest of honor, you know, because you don't want a whole bunch of people to come and there not be, uh, or you, you don't want a whole bunch of people to come and, and the guest of honor not show up because he hadn't been invited. People be standing around saying, well, what are we here for? You know, I thought we're supposed to be recognizing somebody and yet the person is not here. So, you know, it's important and that's a role that we play, you know, as we seek to, to uh, build an atmosphere for our guest of honor, which of course is the Lord Jesus Christ. In this church, you know, we go through the process of sending out invitations. That's what we do with these uh, DVDs, with the uh, uh, CDs that we hand out, with the uh, broadcasts that go over the air. Whenever we talk to somebody out in the public, at work, at school, wherever we may be, that's what we're doing. We're sending out invitations to a party. But, you know, we, we don't need to uh, uh, get so caught up. And that, that whenever the people come, we forget to invite the most important person of all, which is the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, that's kind of what happened to Mary and Martha as they, uh, you know, received the Lord Jesus in their house. Or Martha, rather. Because as you well know the story, Martha, as the scripture says, was much encumbered by her work, by her duties, by preparing everything, while Mary was attending to the guest of honor, paying attention to the guest of honor. And, and Martha, it was a good thing what she was doing, but she didn't realize, look, the guest of honor has arrived. Everything's in its place. It's now time to turn your attention to the guest of honor. So I implore all of us, as we build this church and as we build our lives, let's never forget that it wouldn't all be possible to begin with if not for the guest of honor, the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, uh, something else that we do as we're throwing a party, be it for a guest of honor or not, is we decorate. You know, and some people go all out whenever they decorate. And they have great imagination, and stuff hangs off the ceilings, and, and stuff is wrapped around the windows, and, and there's stuff all over the tables, and, and uh, it's, it's quite a beautiful sight. You know, people use lights, people use candles, people probably get on the internet and just get all kinds of ideas. How can I make this party as beautiful as possible because not only do I want to impress those who I've invited, but most of all, I want to impress the guest of honor. 
well, what do we do for decoration as we prepare for the Lord's party? Do we hang stuff off of the ceilings or, or put stuff all over the pews or something to that effect? No, that's cool. That's nice. And if we have the resources and we should make this place as beautiful as possible. But, you know, what about those places that can't afford such? Even in uh, foreign lands where they worship up under a tree or something. You know, is that what invites the Lord? No, but it's ourselves. We are the decorations for the Lord's party. And if I could be so bold, can y'all deal with some Song of Solomon tonight? You don't hear the Song of Solomon too much in church. But how many of you know that the Lord loves a pretty us? Now, there's a few different schools of thought concerning the Song of Solomon. One is that it was a uh, literal uh, communication between King Solomon and his number one wife his favorite bride or whatever. Another school of thought is that it's an uh, allegory talking about uh, basically showing the Father's love for Israel. Or it could be a type of uh, Jesus and his affection for the church. But anyway, you slice it, the way I look at it is, is it's uh, basically showing uh, love between uh a bridegroom and a bride. And we know that all throughout the Bible that God takes time to par carefully parallel the human relationship between man and woman, between husband and wife more specifically, and his relationship with us. So either way you slice it, I mean, this is pretty much what it boils down to, you know, that this is, uh, I believe, not only uh, shows the the affectionate relationship between man and woman, but also between God and his people. Song of Solomon, chapter 4, verse 1 through 15, the bridegroom says, Behold, thou art fair, my love. Behold, thou art fair, that hast dove's eyes within thy locks. Thy hair is as a flock of goats that appear from Mount Gilead. Thy teeth are like a flock of sheep that are even shorn, which came up from the washing, whereof every one bare twins, and none is barren among them. Thy lips are like a thread of scarlet, and thy speech is comely. Thy temples are like a piece of pomegranate within thy locks. Thy neck is like the Tower of David, builded for an armory whereon there hang a thousand bucklers, all shields, and mighty men. Thy two breasts are like two young rows that are twins which feed among the lilies. Until the day break and the shadows flee away, I will get me to the mountain of myrrh and to the hill of frankincense. Thou art all fair, my love. There is no spot in thee. Come with me from Lebanon, my spouse, with me from Lebanon. Look from the top of um, Amana, from the top of Shinar and Hermon, from the lion's ends, from the mountains of the leopards. Thou hast ravished my heart, my sister, my spouse. Thou hast ravished my heart with one of thine eyes, with one chain of thy neck. How fair is thy love, my sister, my spouse. How much better is thy love than wine and the smell of thine ointments than all spices. Thy lips, O my spouse, drop as the honeycomb. Honey and milk are under thy tongue, and the smell of thy garments is like the smell of Lebanon. A garden enclosed is my sister, my spouse, a spring shut up, a fountain sealed. Thy plants are an orchid of palm granites with pleasant fruits, camphor, and with spikenard, spikenard, and cyphron, calamus, and cinnamon, with all trees of frankincense, myrrh, and aloes, with all the chief spices. Uh, Obviously, the bridegroom was taken by the beauty of his bride. It's just laid out over and over. Maybe some of these things are hard to understand. Not all of us can look at our wives and say, you know, your hair looks like goats, you know. But if you understand what's going on in this, I mean, it's just to give you a little background that, that you know, on those grassy hills over there, and you know, the goats were black. And if you look at them from a distance and, and uh, as they were clustered up together, a whole lot of them, as they came racing down the hill, it just looked like just a, a shimmering black flow of just something beautiful coming down the grassy hills. Uh, I mean, he was extremely taken 
by his bride. And, and I believe that it's not just from the outward what he saw from the outside. Because how many of you know that, that it really takes the inside beauty in order to manifest the outside beauty? How many of you have ever met somebody extremely attractive and you were extremely taken by their outside looks? But once you got to know them, you thought, man, they're ugly. You know, they are quite ugly. It's um, so it's the inside beauty. And how does such beautiful decoration come forth? We find the answer in Psalm chapter 51, verse 16 and 17. It says, For thou desirest not sacrifice, else would I give it. Thou delightest not in burnt offering. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart. O God, thou wilt not despise. You see, once he, Jesus sees the most beautiful decoration of all, a humble heart, and so many mu more beautiful decorations are made apparent. That's why it's more important than anything than how we look, than how the church looks or whatever else that we make sure that we're right on the inside because once God sees the beauty then the beauty will manifest itself to the outside and then all the world cannot help but to see that beauty and they will flock to it they will flock to it Amen. something else that is needed whenever you're preparing a party is uh got to fix some good food huh and also for our guest of honor you got to make sure that it's what the guest of honor likes right Correct. i mean if you invite me now i'm not the kind to to want parties thrown for myself it's just i just don't want it i don't like being on the spot like that like that but if somebody were to and they were to ask you know okay what does larry like well i could go two directions this is just food for thought in case you ever trespass against my wishes and, and throw me a very large party. I like seafood. I love seafood. Now, really, there's not any food I'll turn my nose up to, actually, except one that I'll mention in a minute. So take careful note of that more than anything. But I like seafood, but on the other side, I just like good old home cooking. They call it soul food. I love fried chicken. I love the mashed potatoes with gravy that weighs a ton, you know. I, I love the, the butter beans and the okra. I love the cornbread. I mean, that's, that's fine, too. I mean, you could bust that out just any time that you want, and I'll be satisfied. But don't bring on olives. Don't bring on olives. And don't be one of these kind of people, Brenda, because you're an expert cook and you're a professional chef and all that. And you could probably think that, well, I could probably fix up some olives in such a way that Larry won't even know they're in there. I'll know they're in there. <laughs> olives has this scent and this taste that from the time I was a child, uh, even up till now, is just deplorable. If you bring olives to my party, I might just leave. So it's important, you know, that you not fix just any old thing. Do some research. Find out what the guest of honor likes to eat because you don't want everybody else chowing down just to see him over there just going, nah, I'm all right with this, this drink. It's cool. Don't worry. I'm just not hungry tonight. I'm not feeling too good or something like that. But, you know, I believe that God's favorite food is obedience. Obedience. First Samuel. Chapter 15, verse 22, says, And Samuel said, Hath the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to hearken than the fat of rams. The Lord loves him some obedience. If he walks into a room and there's a bunch of obedience in there, then, I mean, he just, I'm, I'm hungry now. I'm hungry. I'm ready to eat. I smell the obedience of my children because from obedience springs forth everything else that we could possibly want to do in our lives and the life of this church. Obedience to the Lord allows just all kinds of things to take place. And I mean, to the Lord, there's just all kinds of good tasting 
and good smelling things in obedience. There are several places in the scripture where he says, look, you know, sacrifices, I appreciate them. I want them. I want you to do them. This back in the Old Testament days and even today, you know, there's things I want you to do. There's things that, you know, I'm, I'm putting on your heart to do. But, you know, look, more than that, just start out with obedience. Because from then, it's just, it's downhill. So may the oven be my humble heart. May the food be my obedience. May the smell linger ever sweet. And may the taste be always pleasing. The last thing that you should do as you uh, are getting this party together for the guest of honor is you have to prepare and be ready for the arrival of the guest of honor. Can I get a volunteer tonight to play Jesus? Or can I draft somebody to play Jesus? Either way, somebody's going to play them some Jesus tonight. <laughs> Alex, on board with me. All right. That's right. That's right. Uh, excuse me, I need a comp. That there was none of y'all's business, so y'all don't even worry about trying to figure out what it was I said to them. All right. Now, what I want everybody to do is just pretend like the service is over with or pretend like it's before the service began or whatever. So you're in socializing mode right now, okay? So everybody stand up. Just talk about anything. You know, nobody socializes before or after sitting down. So stand up, turn, talk to people, greet, talk about sports, do whatever you want to do. Just socialize. What's up, man? How's it going? Enjoying yourself tonight? Cool. All right. Now, in case you didn't notice, Jesus has come in the door. And what will y'all do? <laughs> you could be seated for now. See, you have to be ready for the rival. Don't go nowhere yet, Alex. You, you got a couple, little bit more to do there. Uh, you have to be ready. Yeah, we can't, many times we can be so involved in other things that we can completely not notice when God arrives. You know, so many times we can be so caught up in our own stuff, whether it's at church or whether it's out in the world. You know, oftentimes we forget what we come to church for. And it becomes just a thing that we do during the week. And even the most dedicated of us, which is pretty much here tonight, and I know some people have work obligations and so forth, but we still make it such a matter of routine that when we come in this place, it's just, I'm coming to church, I'm going to go home, I'm going to eat, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But yes, yeah, it's much more than that. It needs to be much more than that. The world needs for it to be much more than that. And we have to get to the place to where church becomes an exciting place. I preached somewhat on this, or actually in great length on this, uh, a couple of sermons ago that I preached when I was talking about entering into his gates with thanksgiving and into his course with praise. We've got to come ready, and we've got to come ready and prepared for the Savior to come walk again, this Savior that we have invited so many times in our own personal prayer life, this Savior that we have implored to come so often as we've gathered in this church, we have to be ready for his arrival. Alex, or Jesus, if you could go outside again. Now, I understand that I tricked you a little bit just then, and I set you up. So now, with you having full knowledge of what is about to take place, I ask you to once again stand up. 
and I ask Jesus to come in. All right. Yes. 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 Much better. Much better. Much better. Praise God. But you know what? There is still yet one little thing that I must bring up. And by way of example, I will uh, point to such things as say, have you ever seen on TV, if nothing else, parades or, or some, some huge gathering where a president, president or some such thing is going to arrive? Do the people wait for him to actually appear in front of them before they begin their applause and their cheers and their excitement and so forth. No, he actually walks into it. You know, oftentimes, uh, you can have a seat for a minute. I don't know how, I'm, how long I'm going to go on with this. Oftentimes, that's what we do when we come to church. You know, we wait for Jesus to show up right. before we begin our praise. Oh. You know, we wait for the worship to be just right before we begin our praise. We wait for ourselves to feel just up to par before we begin our praise. And, and oftentimes, you know, we, we leave and we say, man, that was a, a rough service. That was a dry service. Preacher didn't really hit it right today or tonight. You know, singing wasn't quite right on the praise and worship team. And, and, and really, you know, all of that is besides the point. Right. Whenever you talk about, you know, preparing for the arrival of Jesus, Amen. that you come in with your praise, right. that you start your applause as an invitation to Jesus to come in, not wait for him to come in and seemingly beg for your applause. To look at you and hope that you notice that he's there by some chance and then give him praise and glory. You see, we should, I mean, you see it at sporting events and everything before the team comes onto the field, especially in a big game. People are standing up and they just beside themselves, heart beating fast, everything else. And they start erupting into, into applause and praise and worship or so to speak and the team comes running onto the field you know well, we're in a bigger situation than that i was almost about to say game but no it's not a game it's not a game we're talking about jesus christ you know the one who saved us we're all sitting here today because of what he did for us maybe not long ago or maybe 50 years ago but jesus christ saved each and every one of us and that should be enough for all of us to shake the shackles off and to get the lead out of our feet and to and to get the smile on our face and to praise and worship god for everything that we're worth and when he comes in here could you just imagine if we were just all just beside ourselves in praise, beside ourselves in shouting glory to the Lord, and then he came walking in, oh, would that not please the Savior? Would that not please the Savior? You know, I think it'd be a cool thing to add every, the beginning of every church service or even beforehand, if we could just start praising God even without the worship team before we even come into the platform. Uh, onto the platform, you know, just to show, you know, that we can do it. We can do it. I have something to praise God for. I don't know what what he did for Kevin. I don't know what he did for Larry. I don't know what he did for Debbie or Brenda or anybody else on the praise and worship team, but I know what he did for me. I know what he did for me. Alex, if you could once again walk out. We're going to do this one more time. We have invited Jesus. We have decorated the place with ourselves. So now, Jesus will soon be coming in. Yes! Blessed be the name of the Lord. 
Hallelujah! Hallelujah! And then upon the arrival of Jesus, it reaches a new crescendo as we go sense the presence of the Lord in our midst, and we bless Him like we've never blessed Him before. We're not worried about tomorrow. We're not worried about the bills. We're not worried about the job. All we know is that this is the man that saved my soul. This is the man that has a plan for my life. This is the man that breathed breath into me both physically and spiritually when everybody else gave up on me this man stood by me through thick and thin and says that I will never leave you and I will never forsake you blessed be the name of God blessed be the name of God hallelujah hallelujah Jonathan if you could come to the keyboard blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus thank you Lord Alex I appreciate it man appreciate it appreciate it Matthew Chapter 25, verse 31. You know, this, this scripture is most often used to illustrate the sudden coming of the Lord to carry his saints home and, and of those who will be left behind. But, you know, I believe it's equally as relevant to tonight's message as we must also keep ourselves ready for the sudden appearance of the Lord Matthew chapter 25 verse 1 through 13 says then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom and five of them were wise and five were foolish they that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them but the wise took oil and their vessels with their lamps while the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye, go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Afterward came also the other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Watch therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. Watch therefore, for ye don't know when Jesus is going to come. Ring, let this ring true within your soul, saints. It's easy enough to point this scripture to those who don't know the Lord. And if there be anybody, either here, if there be anybody watching this on their television, then truly you need to watch because you don't know when the Lord is going to come. But for those of us who are saints, we don't need to be so smug as if we need to curl up in our bed and shut our eyes and to curl up in the ever patient ever loving grace of God for there is much to celebrate there is much to be enthusiastic about as we walk this Christian life yes sometimes it is fraught with trials and tribulations and many times things happen that we don't understand and that we can't make sense of Yet, yeah, there is so much still to celebrate. The cross of Christ is proof enough he is good. The cross of Christ, what he did for us, is proof enough. Warrants our celebration, our love of him. To separate ourselves from other people and from other church churches. You know, his scripture even says, you know, worship him. And the beauty of holiness, to be holy simply means to be separate. To do that, to do that, we must become a church that is head over heels passionately in love more with Jesus than with works or anything else. From the love of Jesus will come forth a passion to do stuff, to work like you've never worked before. 
it all starts with a passion for Jesus, preparing for his party all the time. Not just in this church, but it has to start even in our own lives, you know. Because basically what church is supposed to be about, it's supposed to be one big party made of a collection of smaller parties, or so to speak. All of us through the week should be just having a fit with our Lord, should be having just blast and a party with our Savior. Oh, if, and if, if we're not, we need to, we need, we must make the time to do so. We have to watch both in our own lives and we have to watch as a church. I implore you, First Assembly, to begin even more than you've ever done before to make this house a house of celebration. Mm. A house of celebration for our God. Did you hear what I said? A house of celebration for our God. That's what it should be, a house of celebration. When people come walking in, they should see people celebrating what God has done for them. Do you know what I'm saying? They, they don't need to come in seeing a people that's cast down, a people that looks defeated. And I'm not saying that we are. Don't get me wrong. But I know how it is sometimes to come in and life just, just puts you down. But, oh, we have much to celebrate, much to celebrate. Let's make this and make this your prayer. Whenever you pray concerning this church, say, God, make this house a house of celebration, a house of celebration. May it not be so distracted by the goings to and fro of this world that I miss the long-awaited appearance of my loving and patient Lord. But when he does arrive, may he find a people eager to see his face, a people with lives that can serve as beautiful decorations that fill the place. So be careful in how you live and what it's supposed to be about when we come through these doors. For we're not here to draw attention to ourselves. We're here to worship our risen Lord. Oh, just bless him one more time. Just bless him one more time. Bless him one more time. Bless him one more time. We have prepared a party for our guest of honor, the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be your name, Almighty God. Blessed be your name, dear Lord. I come to you in the name of Jesus, and I just pray, God, that you would breathe more life into us than we've ever had before in the name of God. Lord, if there be anybody here, Lord, who is battling depression or, or being oppressed by something, Lord, then I pray that they be released in Jesus' name. Lord, I believe that this very group of people here tonight, Lord, can be that people, Lord God, that will send this church to the next level in the name of of Jesus. I believe that this very people here tonight will be those responsible for making this a house of celebration. And I believe that for those who come Sunday, that they'll find themselves amazed at what the Lord is doing. I believe that the people who come Sunday will look in wonderment at their brothers and sisters who are who are giving you all the glory and giving you all the honor. Lord, your word says that you inhabit the praises of your people. And I believe, Lord God, that when we lift up, Lord, a praise to you out of holy hearts, out of broken and contrite hearts, Lord God, Lord, then you will inhabit praise, Lord Jesus. And Lord, we'll be able to see the miracles. We'll be able to see the salvation because I've noticed, Lord, in times past, Lord, whenever this people has humbled themselves, Lord God, whenever we have given ourselves over to praise and abandoned ourselves, Lord God, you have moved in each and every case. I've seen you bring the lost to salvation, Lord God. I have seen you do the miraculous, Lord Jesus. Lord, I pray that we be hungry like we've never been before. I pray that we be thirsty like we've never been before. And I pray that we take it upon ourselves to make sure that we're the decorations that we should be for you, Lord God. And Lord, that we eagerly await your arrival, both in our lives, Lord God, and in the life of this church. Oh, blessed be your name, almighty God. Hallelujah. 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 Lord, just fill this place with your Holy Spirit. All
Almighty God. Fill the people with your Holy Spirit, Almighty God. Lord, I pray that the gifts, Lord, be released in this place, Lord, the gifts of prophecy, the gifts of healing, Lord God, the gifts of tongues in the name of Jesus, Lord, all the gifts in the name of God, Lord, may we be separate, Lord, in the name of God. May we be holy in the name of Jesus, Lord. I pray encouragement upon this people, Lord God. I pray for strength, for wisdom, Lord God. Lord, for I believe that in the coming days, Lord God, you're going to impart things unto us. The more that we avail ourselves to you, Lord God, the more that you're going to impart unto us, Lord God. Those things that were mystery yesterday will be clear tomorrow. Those things that were we were unsure about yesterday will know exactly what to do today, Lord God. It'll be just like a light bulb going off. I know there are people in here today, tonight, Lord, struggling with what they should do, Lord God. You're about to tell them, Lord God. You're about to tell them. You're about to tell them, Lord God. We're going to make this house a house of celebration for you, Lord God. We commit it to you, Lord God. This is your house, Lord. This is your house, Lord God. This is your house. Yes, we're going to build a kingdom, Lord God. We're going to build a kingdom, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be your name. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We give you all the praise, Lord. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.